experiencing heartburn. Bryce is back with some natural and effective ways to put out the fire. If this is something yes. you are going through, it is severely uncomfortable. Absolutely. So we want to talk about what is causing it and what, yeah. what it's all about. So a lot of us have this sensation that experience heartburn, that we are literally on fire in the center of our chest. It sends a lot of folks to the ER, by the way, with uh, yes. symptomatology like a heart attack. So that initial, they're not sure, <laughs> present to the ER. <laughs> yeah. But heartburn is not heart attack. And what causes heartburn is ultimately, if I can get you to put your fist right there, yeah. yeah, that's actually the size proportion to your body of your stomach. Okay. And now your esophagus will actually enter into your stomach, mm -hmm. right there midline to your sternum, okay? okay? And so when acid escapes your stomach, that's causing the heartburn. So we have an illustration that we'll show folks at home yeah. that really, you know, really nicely illustrates this. In the A version, mm -hmm. we don't have that stomach acid escaping. In the B version, that lackadaisic or relaxed valve yes. is letting acid, the blue stuff, come out of and escape into the esophagus, where the tissue there is not meant to receive acid, by the way, and it burns. Got okay, it. stomach tissue is supposed to have acid in it. It's yes. a pH of about you know one or two. Think battery acid, and it's excoriating. Okay, so oh the, the, the term GERD, yes, gastro or sorry, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, mm -hmm. is where that valve is allow is a disorder. It's allowing stomach acid to escape. Mm -hmm. That can actually ultimately cause gastritis. Even Barrett's esophagitis, which is, by the way, precursory okay. to esophageal cancer. So it's no joke. Oh. Don't ignore and stomach acid. And that's just a loose valve? Just like, why is it loose, though? How did it get loose? So a lot of reasons. You could mm -hmm. actually have an outpouching of your diaphragm, which is a big muscle that allows you to, to breathe or inspire. Mm. So when that uh, muscle escapes sort of that diaphragm, is supposed to keep it nice, tight, and taut, mm. that is a herniation. So it could be a physical anomaly. Yeah. Could be foods you're eating. Okay, or be. supplements you're taking, by the way, that causes that valve to get relaxed mm. and allows it to open. Now, those of us who have been pregnant, mm -hmm. you know, in the, into the uh, third trimester. I've tried that yeah. mm -hmm. a couple of times. <laughs> right? So that, st that stomach is, it, it expands into the third trimester and there's no room. It pushes up mm -hmm. against the diaphragm and the diaphragm is supposed to be nice and tight against the esophagus mm -hmm. and allows the stomach acid to escape. Oh, and that's so a why lot you of get it during women, pregnancy. That's right, exactly. Yeah. I've actually never experienced it, but I know that's many good. people who have. So let's Very talk common. about what you need to do. Absolutely. So foods really high in fiber. Yeah. Not just because I love touting fruits and vegetables, but you'll see here lentils, black rice, so mm. any grains and beans that have a high amount of soluble fiber in particular. Okay. okay, you can also supplement with soluble fiber. The way you know it's soluble, you mix it into water and it disappears. Okay. So that really helps individuals with stomach acid reflux. Got okay. It. Now, these are also, you know, brightly colored fruits. Uh, this is very high in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Potassium found in bananas and avocados. Potassium helps the tonicity of that valve. Okay. okay, so eat more of that stuff. And by the way, lots of fiber as well. Yeah. Ginger is one of my favorite foods, not just to cook with, but you can actually slice up a couple of pieces, put into some hot water, yes. and that will ultimately relax the stomach. It's an anti-nauseant, yeah. but it'll relax the stomach and, and allow that acid to stay where, it's, where it is. Excellent. Okay? These are the foods to avoid, folks. This is really mm -hmm. what we want to stay free of. Caffeine causes mm -hmm. that, not just more stomach acid production, but again, that valve to open up. Really? So avoiding caffeine is key. Okay. So peppermint gum and even peppermint tea. Really? These are things to kick out. Yeah, absolutely. So encapsulated and terracoated peppermint can help calm the stomach. We've yeah. heard of this, right? Mm -hmm. Anti-nauseant. But those capsules will get into where they're supposed to, in the guts, yeah. not the stomach. If they get into the stomach and uh, uh, blow there, yes. then you're ultimately going to be regurging. So dairy, meats, anything that's very heavy to digest. And yeah. folks, if you are supplementing, like most of us probably should be, with magnesium, because this is where we really, really deficit, uh, we have a major deficiency deficit, in North America. Yeah. Soils are depleted by it, but it's going to hurt the person that has hyperacidity or regurg or GERD, okay? okay. Gastroesophageal or heartburn for that matter. So kick that out. Chocolate, obviously, we've heard of peppers, not a good thing. Uh, but in our in our pharmacy, with yes. an F, our pharmacy, yeah. there's a lot of uh, spices in there, extracts, chewable form. So this one's one of my favorite here. Uh, and this stuff is fenugreek. Smell this. This is this smells amazing. Cook more with that stuff. It's just oh, that smells good. Scorch. Found a lot of Indian sort spices. Of like okay. cumin-ish. Yeah, it's in a capsule form. Yeah, cumin, mustard seeds, mm -hmm. fenugreek. All these are sort of the same family. Yeah. And then we've got slippery elm. Slippery elm is something else that you can use as a mucilage. So this is the constant theme here. These are all mucilages and deglycerized licorice. I mean, I don't know if you like the flavor of. Licorice. I hate licorice. Oh, so don't take that you want one. Me to eat it? <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away without sampling something. Is it um okay? That's marshmallow root. That's so what much slippery better. elm and marshmallow root. Oh, it's nice right? and sweet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can chew that. What this is going to do is coat 
the esophagus mm -hmm. and also lower the or increase the pH, lower the acidity and yeah. coat. We're concerned about erosion, right? right? So what we want to do is make sure we coat that. And aloe, aloe vera, an incredible thing to drink on a daily. Again, create oh. a pH that's more alkaline yeah. and heal that erosion, heal the inflammation in the esophagus. Very good, Bryce. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, Lots of ways to help you out with that.